tramping through the mud on a one horse open sleigh. Mud, 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 mud. And here are the heifers. Okay, people. Uh, very blowy again. I've got one little muffler thing on my mic. The other one's fallen off. What can you do? So, we will have wind noise on here, I'm sure. I, I can never tell until I get home and look on the computer how noisy it is. Anyway, someone asked me when we bring the heifers in. Well, not much longer they'll be out. So, check my diary yet yeah, uh, the other day. Look, let's have a look. They're coming towards me over my shoulder. We'll see how long before they take to get up to me. Check my diary the other day. I don't write much of a diary. I just write key points in there. Uh, last year, they came in on December the 17th. Pretty sure they'll come in before then. We've been slowly trickling them in a, a bit. Um, we've got a few that are due to calves, so they've been coming in. I think, I'm not sure how many we're down to now. I'm going to come to check. I've forgotten. Bad management, isn't it? How many have we got out here? Let's have a look. I think it might be about 18. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, 20. But I think two of those are dry cow, so uh, should I be about 18 heifers. But there's not a lot of grass out here. They've, they've been up the top fields because um, it's been wet down here. They've now come back down grazing on these lower grounds. But you can see here, not a lot of grass on the ground. But they have actually got nearly the entire farm to ranch over now. Uh, I've just opened all the gates um, and I'm just letting them out. They will be in before Christmas, 100% sure on that. We never keep them out in January. My dad, years ago, used to keep a few out um, and feed them hay. That was before we built a new shed. Uh, but it's not ideal because it poaches up the ground. And also, it's quite a long way from the farm. You've got to come down here with a bale of hay every day. I don't fancy doing that. <coughs> There's a dry cow over there. We just put a couple out here. Do you know what? Every day out here saves us straw and hay. So it's, it's uh, a situation which maybe not ideal, but every farmer knows that if you can keep your costs down, you actually might make a quid. You might not mind. Right, 588. All right, got my little list. Let's have a little look. So there's a Angus here. The only Angus we've got. Um, that one there was a crappy little calf, not very good. So we decided we'd keep it. Um, and then we were gonna sell it in the autumn, but the, the beef price is really low. So we thought, do you know what? We can just carry one through the winter. It's done all right, they usually catch up, but we don't feed them to bolt them up like we perhaps we should. But they're not worth a lot of money, Angus Heifer. Right, okay, so top two are up at the uh, house. 688 and 1162, 14th and 15th of December, right. Okay, team, we're looking for that cow. 688 or heifer. No, that's the cow, isn't it? What to my... Let's have a look at her. Well, she's not looking obviously bagged up. When I say bagged up, the udder gets tight when they're due to calve. I wouldn't say she's anything to worry about because we do bring them up early if they're, if they're looking really bagged up. Right, 1162. Okay, where are you? Oh, is that the other dry cow over there? Dumpy one over there, isn't it? 1162, let's have a look. Are you 1162? Come in, come in, tell me your number. Hello, what number are you? Are you 1162? You are 1162, look at that. Let's have a look. What's your udder like, lady? You've got a nice, nice big tum on you, haven't you? Hey, let's have a look. Not particularly bagged up. When I say bagged up, I'm expecting a tight udder starting to fill with milk for the calf. Not obvious signs there, so I'm not rushing to bring them up. I don't want them calving down here because if they do, the blooming calf could be anywhere. Okay, so that's 11.62. And uh, these are all the ones. I'm gonna look at them. They, they've started to grow their winter coat. They don't worry. It's not too bad for them out here. It's just a lack of food. They don't mind the cold. In fact, they're healthier outside than they are inside. Look, they, they've got a, you can see the winter coat, look at it. Can you see that? It just grows so much longer, like, you know, like a woolly blanket on the outside of them. Um, but, uh, no one's having a wee, lovely. So various ages here. Some of these are in calf, some aren't. The, when they come up, they'll be uh, got in calf, probably. Uh, not by me, by the AI man. Oh, that one's, look, it's tag. 
Does that one's tag all right? It's not on very well. It's not a very good tag placement. Uh, so you can see, if you, this is interesting, a little bit of husbandry here. So you see the ear tag really. We want to, when you put the tag in, you want to really put it in the back end of the ear near the head because that's the thickest bit of skin. It's less likely to pull out. Now this one here, I'm not going to get walk up to her because she'll walk away, but can you see that one there? For some reason, it's just on the edge of the ear, look. Oh, don't move. Where is it gone? Just on the edge of the ear. Now the danger there, that's a very thin bit of skin there, right on the edge, and the chances are if it catches it on something, you know, it catches it on a branch or anything like that, or in a ring feeder when it's eating, it'll pull that tag out and rip the ear, and that's what happens sometimes. Let's see if there are any tags missing. I think these all look pretty good. I try and keep on top of the tags, because if you lose them, it's the right pain, and you can get an inspection and they don't like that. Uh, no, I think we're on a 100% tag rate here. So that was the one that wasn't very good, that tag. 11.58, but the rest are all okay. Right, well I'm heading back now. I'm not gonna bring those two cows up this week, because um, they don't need to. But uh, they're gonna have to be in what, you know, I think we've probably got about another week out here and then they're gonna have to be in because it's not fair on them trying to, for them to scrabble over bits of grass here. It's also that element of risk of, the phone rings and says your heifers are out because they start getting hungry uh, and I don't want a phone call like that I had a phone call like that back in the summer and it wasn't actually our cows it was the neighbours cows and about 120 cows were out in the neighbours wheat field at uh, 5 to 10 at night I was on the sofa just about to well in the kind of usual way, ooh, it's muddy, usual way, I just dozed off. I think it was a Friday night as well. And, uh, oh, just a real panic that was. Um, and in the end, um, I didn't know it was, it was ours, I thought it was our cows. Uh, my wife and the kids came back, and we all drove back, and we found them. They were the neighbours' cows, but you can't leave the neighbours to look after them, because it's not fair on them, because it could be your turn sometime. So in the end... Oh yeah, they're following me now, look. Sorry guys, not much grass out here. Uh, in the end, we, we took about, um, I think it was an hour and a half to get them all in. We have to get them back through the hedge where they came from in the end, so, huh. Sorry I got sidetracked there, but the reality is, scary if your cows get out. They're following me in here, but I haven't got anything else to offer them. Normally, normally I'm taking them to fresh grazing, but there's nothing here really. So oh, there's a neighbor farmer going up, look. Is massy. Nice massy loader there. Nice. Whoa. So, oh, forgot to add, I had a quite a nice little surprise the other day. Someone sent me an early Christmas card from Canada. Some subscriber wrote, sent me a Christmas card, which is uh, a really nice surprise, really. Do you know, it's it's the little things like that that make these sort of things worthwhile because uh, we don't have a lot of interaction. I mean, I, I talk to you and you sometimes write your comments and stuff, but uh, it's much appreciated because it made me smile. Um, so there you go. Anyway, right, uh, right. Going back to the old Lamb Rover. Look, they still follow me, I'm sorry, but there's nothing behind me. Uh, Let's have a look. Oh, there's a crab apple tree. Any of you know about crab apples? They're the wild apple that you get in the countryside. I uh, don't know why they've got the name crab apple, but they're really sour. Look, so they're still on the tree. They make crab apple jelly out of them. Look, they're still up there. Still up there. They're very tiny. They're not very big. And look, you can see behind there's the fruit of the uh, ivy there behind. Nice little combo. And uh, what's really funny is that um, the cows obviously like them. Because they've been underneath this tree eating them. You can see the mess they made. They've also poked through the fence, which I've got to redo. Um, they obviously like those crab apples. Oh, look. They've got the guard off my bit of fencing around the back there, look. There's a... New, new quick thorn I put in there a couple of years ago and it's got to fill this gap. Right, oh look, there's a crab apple that's fallen down and spiked on there, look. Look at that, look, 
That's an early Christmas decoration. That's my Christmas. That's a funky farmer Christmas decoration. Look at that. Crab apple on a stick. Da, da, da. That would look lovely in your house, wouldn't it? Mm. Anyway, let's give these. Ooh. Ready? There you go, girls. Have a crab apple. What do you reckon? Gone. Which one had it? Okay. Oh no, who scoffed it? Quite good, didn't they make short work of that? All right. Okay. That's it then. Heading back in the Land Rover. And uh, there's a comment on the left here. I just. Uh, Oh, good old Landy. All right, Beth. Um, oh, more fly tipping. Look at that. Tipping. Oh, why do I always have to be the dustman? Here's the common. You might remember the common I bailed for hay in the summer. In fact, let's have a quick flashback to that. Okay, so the grass is, or the stubble, whatever you call it, is bailed down here, but a bit of a shot. More bales than I thought. I think they're in twos and threes. There's two over there, three over there, two there. I've got one on the trailer here. Two there, another one there. I, th I think we've got about 11 out here actually. Um, more bales than I thought. Uh, like I said, it's bedding, you can see it's coarse. There's a nice bit of hay on there, that's left over from getting hay earlier in the month, but this is really coarse stuff bedding. So tw uh, 11 or so bales of, of bedding, I think we'll, we'll have to do, won't it? Let's see how we get on with it when we use it. I just didn't expect to get so much. So there it is, uh, and now it's what it's looking like, a bit bleak in the winter. I, I, um, there's my stewardship board. So, uh, yeah, so it's a bit different from wind, from uh, in the summer, but um, I am going to continue uh, cutting that for, well, it wasn't really hay, it was more of a bedding, but really useful. When it, I haven't, I don't know why I've done, done it before. It's the cheapest bedding I could get because it, um, it didn't cost much to bail it, and you know, it's cheaper than buying round bale straw in, so I ended up with 11 bales out of there. Um, the cows really liked it because it, it was no good for feed because it had the uh, brambles in it. You can see it's pretty rough, but um, it also had a lot of bits of grass and stuff and they picked over it, so it's quite useful really. Um, and apparently they're putting information boards there this uh, spring. The council have got plenty of money to spend on things like that, telling people what's out there. And I've got to tell them. <laughs> Let's hope I get it right. Uh, right, anyway. Off we go. Right. See you later, girls. See you later, boys and girls.